All right, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Edward Simmons, 104311. All right, Edward, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Ms. Cheryl Renata and Ms. And Tony Marabella will be your panel. Explain the process to you, read some information to the record, have a pro interview, ask you some questions, you can respond. At the end, you can make a statement, we'll take a vote. You understand the process? So. And then we have some folks here uh, in support. They'll speak. Uh, Ms. Jane Hogan, who can uh, speak at the end if you'd like to. Uh, Mr. Kerry Myers, Ms. Mary Alice Frank, James Frank, John Frank, Ricky Christian, Diana Christian, Rita Christian, Leticia Williams, Zena Thomas. So we'll be able to speak uh, briefly at the appropriate time. Everett Simmons, DOC number 104311, your first class offender. Yes, sir. Parole eligibility date 12 7 2022, good time 7 9 2030, full term 11 5 2080. Uh, you are a 99 year sentence commutation for second degree murder. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Simmons, how old are you? 59. How many years have you been incarcerated? 41 years. And do you have a GED or high school diploma? Yes, sir. Which one? I said. I said, okay, when did you get that? Last year. Okay, great. And what grade did you drop out of school in? Ninth grade. Why did you drop out of school? Oh, I just, I just stopped going on. I Why? was kind of tough. Wait, I was, I was, you're I was, cutting I was, up? What's going on? I, I wasn't doing well in school. I wasn't doing well. So I dropped out, try to get a job. I dropped out. I wasn't doing too good. Did you start working? Did you get out and work or what? Yeah, I, I worked for a little while. I worked. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you currently do there? You're a trustee? Yes, sir. Class A trustee? Yes, sir. What do you currently do for there at the facility? Right now, I work in the laundry. You work in the laundry? Yes, sir. How long have you been there? About five months. What did you do before that? I went to school. What school? GED school. GED school, so you were, yeah. how long have you been a trustee? About, about 10, 10 years, something like that, about 10 years. What other what kind of work have you done around the facility? Uh, heavy equipment, uh, carpentry, working in the kitchen. Did a little bit of everything? Yes, sir. Yeah. Where, what are your plans if you were to be released? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I'm go to the parole project. And then after the parole project, go to my mom's house. Where is that? Lafayette, Louisiana. And are you, um, what kind of work you plan on doing? What kind of skills do you have? What kind of work you plan on? Um, my plan is to get in school. My plan is to get instructor out of school. I'm trying, I'd like to get my CDL. I yes. applied for an institution, but they had stopped it. Other people, they had stopped it here. So I was okay. back home. Unable to get into it. You want to drive trucks? What other yep. skills do you have that if you don't get driving trucks just yet, when you get out, what are you going to do? Well, I have a job out there waiting on me where I can do lecture. Exactly. Doing lecture. What is lectures. Lectures? Okay. Working for a company or what? Yeah, it's going to be a, a company. Yeah. So you're going to be doing electric work? Have you had any disciplinary write-ups recently or no? No, sir. How long has it been since you had your last one? Uh, probably about 14 years, 14, 15 years, something like that. Yeah. I think what I got here, I had it right in front of me here. That's right, so back in 13? Yes, sir. Been, been a minute, about, about, about 10 years, huh? Uh, Way back in 13, something like that. What, um, 
How old were you when you committed this crime? 18. And were you on drugs and alcohol? No, sir. Did you use drugs and alcohol? I smoked weed a couple of times, but I didn't, it didn't, I didn't agree with it. Uh, I didn't like it, so I stopped. Well, how long did you smoke weed when you were at, from the time you dropped out of school to, to the time you got went into jail? You no, not that long. no, when I got not. in jail, I wouldn't smoke. And when I got in jail, I wouldn't smoke. And time, no, from the time you got from the time you got out of school, the time you quit school as a ninth uh-huh. grader, to the time you got put in jail. I mean, did you smoke dope regularly? I mean, was that something you just did? You started there towards the end there, and when you were that's seventeen, eight. That's something I tried. Towards the end, just before I got locked up, I tried it and it made me nervous. So I discontinued it. I didn't do it no more. I just what, what about drinking? No, I ain't never drunk in my life. Okay. What um so tell me about the crime. What I mean, you, so you're not really drinking, you're not on drugs. Tell me about the crime. Tell me what happened. Again, we don't have to go and you know labor over it, but I'd like to know what happened. What, what what happened to you in that situation? Why did you, were you there? Why did you do what you did? Tell me. I, I, I think it was a bad decision. I got into an altercation with some people and then it got escalated, got out of hand, and then the person ended up getting stabbed. I was the one that stabbed him. You had a knife or you went back and got a knife? Or? No, I, I had a knife on me. And you, y'all, were, it was over an argument. I mean, what, what? I mean, how do you just? I know it was a bad. I know you, you know, it happened. But how does that? How did it happen? How, how did it just happen? You just snap. You just get mad. What happened? I got, I got angry. I got angry. I got angry. I got angry. I had an angry problem. You know, I got angry. You know, acted out. You know, person was getting the best of me. I got mad. Getting the best of you, fighting you, just just getting on to you, fighting, just fighting. Okay. Yes, sir. And did you know that that what you had done? I mean, you left there immediately, or what? Yeah, we left right after that. Yes, I did. You, did you know what happened to your victim at the time, or you didn't know when you left? No. I didn't think I didn't think it was that serious at the time because it would you know it was number one stab one one swing, so I didn't think it was nothing. You know I just left and went home, and then I then, heard, it, then the police came. That's when I knew it was serious, and um, I ended up taking full responsibility for the crime and came to prison. Tell me about some of the classes you've taken. Have you, you taken some anger management, some victim awareness? Tell me about your classes. Yeah, I, I took anger management. I took one hundred dollars. Where you have a variety of courses that's in one hundred hours. Right, and I have all the information that the attorney gave me. But what you know, what have you taken? What has helped you? What I mean, you know, obviously you had some anger issues back then. I mean, you I have an opportunity. Ang- anger management helped me understand my anger, dealing with my anger. Faith based helped me have a foundation to control myself. So, you know, it gave me a better outlook on life and how to handle things, how to do things right. You know, and when you get out, you're going to get mad and angry again. What do you know? What do you, what do you know to be able to handle it? How, how are you going to be able to figure out how to, how to handle it? Uh, I, I took classes and I, I got a better, I'm not 18 anymore. I, I know I myself still much say, better than I was. Right. I understand, but my point is, is that if you're faced with that on the outside, I mean, uh, you took the club. Well, what can you do to avoid blowing up and getting angry? Look, you can get just as mad when if you get if we let Leave. you out tomorrow. Leave, walk Leave away. That. Yeah, uh, walk away. I learned to just walk away. I learned to avoid problems. I avoided problems in prison for quite a few years, so I learned how to walk away. You know, I learned how to walk away from things now. You know, keep myself from getting in trouble. I just walk away. Have you ever taken any victim awareness? Yes, I was backlogged for victim awareness, but I have never made it in it. 
No, I've been on the backlog list. So you've never taken it? No, sir. Gordon, you have any input for us? Uh, yes, sir. He's a minimum A trustee. Um, he, he is assigned to the laundry. He has been a trustee since 2014. Um, he took $100 pre-release. Uh, he re received his high set on November of 2022. And he's a member of the Point Lookout Project, which is the, uh, the burial place that we hear inmates that family don't claim to buy. That's it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. We're here for Mr. Kerry Myers. Yes. Good morning. Kerry Myers of the Louisiana Parole Project. Um, we're here to let the board know that we fully support Mr. Simmons uh, in his transition. Um, after 41 years of incarceration, um, obviously, Parole Project is the, is the, the, the perfect fit. Uh, to help him uh, make that that step from prison to his to his mother's, uh, where he where he does have a a job waiting for him, um, he has you know he has shown um, stability during his incarceration. He has been a trustee uh, and has never lost his trustee status uh, since he's gotten it. Um, he hasn't had a, a disciplinary infraction in ten years. Um, he has. Uh, he has the support of his family. He has the support of Parole Project. Um, and we believe based on the fact that uh, his age and the time served, he is here because the governor did commute his sentence, um, that Mr. Mr. Uh, Simmons doesn't present any threat to public safety. Um, and we're, again, we prepare to, to put the, the weight of our program uh, behind Mr. Simmons. We have full confidence uh, that, that he will be very successful upon release. All right, thank you. We're here for Ms. Mary Alice Frank. Thank you. You can talk right there. Ms. Mary Alice. Go ahead. Yeah, you stay there. Just, just talk from there. That'd be great. I'm his mother, and I but he did change. He did. He's good now. He's quieter. He's more calm. And he has ambition. The truck driving school, his brother is a truck driver. And he wants to uh, work with him, you know, work with his brother. And all right. Right now, he, he, he's really good. And I can't wait for him to come back. back home. Yes. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. John Frank. I'm right here. Um, I'm his brother. I'm okay. his younger brother. Um, I myself have my own company as well. And, um, I'm a part of his support system, and I feel my brother has changed over the years tr tremendously. Um, he is an inspiration to my younger generation of nephews that are coming up. He has gone through this experience where he can tell them about it. It's a lot going on in our community, and I've spoken to a few people in our community that I want to get him involved in some community organizations to speak about his situation and what he's gone through to try to prevent other kids that are at risk from coming through this situation. So I feel that he would be an asset to what we have going on in the community. I'm a member of several organizations in our community and I wanna introduce him to those people and it's a positive environment. And I'm more than sure that because speaking to him, I know his heart and where he's at now and his position and status in life, that he wants the greater things and he wants to know what life is and experience it. And I'm, I'm fully in support of everything that he needs. All right, thank you so much. All right, Mr. Simmons, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yeah, I'd like to make a statement on I know I'm deeply, I deeply regret the crime that I committed, and I'm really remorseful for the thing that happened because I know the people that I hurt, and I'm truly sorry. I'm, this has really changed me. I'm not the same person anymore. You know, I'm, I'm a different person. I'm not 18, 59 years old. I'm, I'm in a better place in life. My records change, show that I made great progress. So I'm asking that the right. board would consider. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Hi, Ms. Hogan, would you like to briefly wrap it up? Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. Just to state some other things that haven't already been stated is that Mr. Simmons 
has been asked on certain occasions to go to Camp J to provide mentorship to younger guys who can't make it out of the cell blocks before Camp J was closed. He's a member of the Angola CPR team. Um, he's got skills in bricklaying, construction, landscaping. He does have a wide variety of skills and he does have employment opportunities. I think what's also really remarkable about Mr. Simmons is at his pardon hearing a few years ago, he was in classes attempting to get his GED. Mr. Simmons was in special education prior to coming to prison and he had suffered a traumatic brain injury whenever he was uh, in, the, in the fifth or sixth grade. And he was encouraged at his clemency hearing, don't, don't give up, keep on trying to get your GED. And Mr. Simmons continued to work and his getting his high set last year is such a big accomplishment for him. And he is also taking a computer course right now uh, and wants to continue and further his education, which just shows that his rehabilitation is genuine. He has tremendous family support. It's remarkable that his mother is still alive after 41 years and, and there and supporting him and wants him home. It would mean so much to his family if he were given an opportunity for relief. And I would also like to just point out that Mr. Simmons was young, uh, barely 18, just a few months past his 18th birthday when he committed this crime and he pled guilty to it. Um, so he has always accepted responsibility for what he, do, what he did. And he has really taken the steps to address the problems that led to his incarceration. So we ask that this board grant his release with any conditions that are deemed appropriate. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Simmons, I'll vote first. Uh, you have, you put a lot of time in, you've done a lot of work. You've had a lot of you know, good classes. You've done a lot of good in the facility. You do have a lot of skills, um, a lot of family support. You, you ought to be thankful. You got a lot of good family support. My vote today would be to grant your parole for the parole project. I want you to do six hours a month of community service, giving back to the community, try to help somebody, you know, in need. And I would like for you to take victim awareness there. I think they can, they can work with that at uh, the Pro Project. Uh, but that's just, that's my vote for a day. Uh, good luck to you. Ms. Renatza. Uh, I, I do agree. My vote also is to grant to the Pro Project transition plan, and that's based on your, the work that you've done, the low risk score, uh, your positive conduct record over the last 10 years, and the support that you have. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Mabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My vote was the same for the same reasons as outlined by both you and Mr. Bernanke. All right, so you have three votes to pro. You understand stipulations to the pro project? Take uh, uh, victim awareness and you'll uh, have community service six hours per month. You understand the stipulations? Yes, sir. All right, three votes to grant you, Crow. Granted, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you.